MPLS TE Fundamental or MPLS Traffic Engineering Fundamental. In this video, I'm going to talk about the fundamentals of the MPLS TE. In this video, we will learn the basic uh, blocks of the MPLS TE and after that we can talk about the configuration of MPLS TE in future videos here we don't want to configure anything about the mplst but we need to understand the basics of the mplst let me to start to talk about the mplst with this simple scenario in this simple scenario we have only ip we don't have anything about the mpls or mplst and here I'm going to review some of the topics we learned about uh, them in the IP routing courses. Okay, look at here we have R1, R2, R3 and R4 connected to each other and after that we have OSPF as the IGP routing protocol in this scenario. I configured this scenario before and here we can see the configuration of the uh, for example R1, R2 and R3 and R4. Look at here I configured the interface facet and the 0, 0 of the R1. Look at here I used the I, uh, IP address of the, uh, for example, R1 with this syntax. In all scenarios of this course, we are using this syntax for IP addressing, for example, between R1 and R2, because this is a link between R1, rot uh, the rotor 1 and rotor 2. I'm using 10120 slash 24, and this means that we are using between the RX to, uh, for example, RY rotor, this syntax 10 x y 0 slash 24 and after that the ip address of the interface of r1 is this is this in this link is 0 0.1 10 1 2 1 and the interface of r2 is 0 0.2 10 1 2 2 because of that as you can see for the interface facet and a 0 this is the facet and a 0 0 i use the ip address of 10 1 2 1 2 5 5 2 5 5 2 5 5 0 after that, I configured the fast Ethernet 01, the bottom interface with the IP address of 10131. This is the interface of R1. And after that, I configured bandwidth 2 megabit per second or 2000 kilobit per second in this interface and, and bandwidth 1000 kilobit per second or 1 megabit per second on the bottom interface. Also, I enabled OSPF area 1, uh, OSPF area 0, process 1 on the rotor 1. In all scenarios of this course, when I am configuring OSPF, I am using the rotor ID with this syntax 192.168.254x slash uh, x, that's it. And after that, we uh, need to uh, understand the OSPF configuration and OSPF uh, concepts uh, from the CCMP road course or CCNA course before then this course. This is the requirement of this course and prerequisites of this course. You, I need to you learn the OSPF in the courses before this course, okay? And also ISIS. Let me to talk about the configuration of OSPF, rotor OSPF1, rotor ID is configured with 192.168.254.1. And after that, I enabled IP OSPF1 area 0 on this two interface and also IP OSPF network point to point because here we have a broadcast network. I configured the IP OSPF network point to point on these two interfaces. About in router 2, again, we have similar configuration. First, the interface faster than a 0, 0's IP address. This interface has 10122. Uh, 255255550 and after that the bandwidth 2 megabit per second and also I enabled OSPF on this interface. Then in interface facet and a 01 we have the IP address of 10242255252550 OSPF configuration and then bandwidth configuration and also the rotor ID of OSPF configured with the 192.168.2542 about r3 again we have similar configuration only the bandwidth change uh, change to the thousand kilobit per second or one megabit per second also i configured rotor ospf and finally the rotor 4 configured with the uh, two uh, interface faster than a 0, 0 and faster than a 0, 1 and also the bandwidth of faster than a 0, 0 this interface is 2 megabit per second and faster than a 0, 1 is 1 megabit per second we have here one interface loopback interface loopback 0 ip ospf 1 area 0 okay this is the initial configuration of this scenario let me sh to show you the result of this configuration for example from the cli of the rotor one if you check 
the show IP OSPF neighbor. Let me to show you. This is the R1, the R1 CLI. Show IP OSPF neighbor can show us that we have two neighbor, rotor two and rotor three. And also in rotor two, if you check show IP OSPF neighbor, you will see that you have two neighbor, rotor one and rotor four. And also in rotor three, show IP OSPF neighbor can show us we have two neighbor, rotor one and rotor four. And finally in rotor four, show IP OSPF neighbor can show us that we have two neighbor, rotor two and rotor three okay now let me to show you the routing table of the rotor one show ip route received from the for example ospf look at here in this routing table we have received routes from ospf now is available and you know that the quad 4 slash 32 now is reachable from the rotor 2 why because the pass the, the uh, top pass is the better pass from the view from the calculation of the ospf in ospf as you know we are using the cost as the uh, for example uh, feature for calculating the best pass you know that in in ospf every interface has a cost and we have a formula to calculating the cost okay you know about this and i'm not going to talk about the detail of ospf but you know that the cost of interface okay is relevant to the bandwidth when you have higher bandwidth you have lower cost okay you will have lower cost and because of that the pass with the total higher bandwidth is the best pass from the view of the uh, for example ospf because of that in this scenario ospf after spf after shortest pass first calculation should choose the the top pass from the r1 to r2 to r4 as the best pass and as you as you, you can see here this is uh, occurred and uh, you can see that the quad 4 slash 32 now is reachable from the uh, for example rotor 2 if you want you can use trace root command trace root to quad 4 and then with the uh, for example source of loopback 0 or, tra or trace root quad 4 numeric can show us that the traffic uh, passes to the rotor 2 and then from rotor 2 to rotor 4 as you can see here a traffic received in rotor 1 to destination of quad 4 the rotor 1 forwarded the traffic to rotor 2 and after that from rotor 2 to rotor 4 and after that from rotor 4 to the destination this is the normal behavior and you know about this behavior and you learn about this behavior in the ip routing courses you know that in ip routing we are using the destination ip in compare with the routing table of every rotor and after that we can forward the packet to the destination let me to write here this normal behavior in the IP routing. In IP routing, when you are using IP routing, we have a packet with a destination IP, okay? You know that when a router receives this packet, the router should compare the destination IP with its routing table, okay? After finding a pass, the router should forward the pass according to the routing table and uh, to the toward to the destination this is the ip routing and you know that this function should occur in every and each rotor let me to show you look at here for example in this scenario we have r1 and then r2 and then r4 you know that here we have in r1 we have one routing table let me to use rt rt means routing table rt1 for example means routing table one rt2 routing table of rotor 2 and also rt4 means the routing table of rotor 4 when a packet okay received by rotor 1 the destination ip of the packet okay destination ip of the packet should compare with the routing table of rotor 1 and after that the rotor 1 should forward the packet with the regard to the uh, for example routing table of itself to the rotor 2 again in routing to rotor, rotor 2 we need to compare the destination ip with the uh, for example routing table and after that rotor 2 can forward the packet to rotor 4 and then again rotor 4 should compare its uh, the destination ip of the received packet with its routing table and finally the packet can forward it to the uh, destination okay this is the normal behavior this means that in every hop means in every rotor we need to calculate the base pass and we need to the, uh, compare the destination ip of a packet with the routing table this is the behavior you learn about this you are familiar with this behavior in the previous courses okay 
And you know that in some cases we have some problems with this behavior. For example, assume that in router 2, we, I configure a, a static route and this static, a, a static route configured incorrectly. For example, 